Yes, we definitely see geese. It's like Canadian geese. Great. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Just give me one second and then I'll be ready to go. All right. All right. Hello. Good afternoon, um, everyone who's joining us. My name is Katie Weeks. I am the Director of Community Education uh, with Audubon Southwest. Um, and I work out of the Randall Davy Audubon Center here in Santa Fe. And I am really excited to uh, be with you guys today and to talk about some of my favorite animals um, for today's Tales and Tales Summer Reading Program, Virtual Story Time, Birdapalooza is my official name for this uh, program today. So I'm really glad you guys are all here. Um, today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, who I am, where I, um, where I work, which is a really cool space here that we have in our community. Um, I've got a couple of books that we can read and some activities to do. So hopefully we will um, have time to do all of this and um, get to have a really good time. If um, you have questions or things like that, feel free to put to type them in the chat or if you want to unmute and ask, I'm gonna be asking questions throughout the program. So feel free to just like shout out your answers um, and like turn on your camera if you want, or you can keep your camera off, that's fine too. Um, but I love interacting with folks. So feel free to interact today. All right, so just a really quick kind of like information. I work at the Randall Davy Audubon Center and Wildlife Sanctuary right here in Santa Fe. And this is a picture of our Audubon Center. You may have been there before, you may not have. We are located at the very, very, very end of Canyon Road. So if you drive past the plaza, um, up Canyon Road, or up towards the mountains, and then you keep going, and then you keep going, and then you drive on a dirt road, and then you keep going, we are up there right at the edge of the forest. You can kind of see the forest and the mountains behind. Um, and it's a really beautiful nature center that we have. Uh, we're pretty small, but we are um, really beautiful. So you can see that we have this beautiful old house, which is that pink, pink building. Um, right now we do summer camp programs. Um, we also do field trips for students in the fall. And that's a picture of one of some of our kids, um, I think in 2019 before, when we could still do field trips and everything. Um, and so it's a really special place. So we, I wanted to break down the name of the place where I work and that might help us understand a little bit about what I do and where I work. So Randall Davy is the first part of that name. And he was an artist who lived in Santa Fe a while ago. And I mentioned that that pink building was his home. It was his art studio. And the, he used to live up there and he donated the land to the Audubon Society, which is the group I work for. I'm gonna jump to the end of our name. So wildlife sanctuary, that's, a, that's kind of a special word. Does anybody know what the word sanctuary means or have any ideas? You can type it in the chat or you can unmute and shout something out if you have an idea. What does sanctuary mean? Hmm. So sanctuary means a safe place, right? And a wildlife sanctuary is a safe place for wildlife. And so up at the Audubon Center, we have lots of trails and garden, but you can see in this picture that we are also up right next to the forest and up to next to the mountains. And so it's a really safe place for both birds and other wildlife like deer, bobcats and bears and squirrels and um, all sorts of fun creatures, lizards and snakes and everything that lives out there, bugs and insects. And so it's a safe place for animals to be um, and for plants to grow and for us to go up and visit and enjoy being in nature. So I just wanted to throw this out here that we are open again and you can come visit us. Um, our trails are open. We have gardens and we also have that beautiful lawn if uh, you wanted to come and have a picnic after your trail. So um, we do have binoculars if you wanna learn how to go bird watching. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And the middle part 
of that was Audubon. And now that's like the weirdest word in that whole name, right? Audubon. What does that mean? So Audub John James Audubon was a naturalist and an artist, which means he was someone who studied nature and he also was a really great painter. Um, and you can see this picture that he painted of this beautiful bird on the screen, right? What does this bird look like? Do you guys, anyone wanna share what they see in this picture? What do they notice about this picture? So we might notice that this bird um, looks like it's moving around. It has beautiful colors on it. Um, yeah, we might see that it, it might look like a crane. We might notice that it has a long neck and a long beak um, and some long legs. It's standing what looks like on the shore next to some water. There's another couple of them in the background. Um, there's plants everywhere. Um, and it's a really beautiful picture. And this is a really beautiful bird in real life. It's called an avocet. And we have them around streams and ponds and things here in New Mexico sometimes. Um, and they're a type of shorebird, which means they need water to survive. But this picture was painted by John James Audubon. Um, and he painted hundreds of pictures over his lifetime of birds. He went out into nature and he studied them. Um, and he eventually put all of his pictures together in a, a giant book called Birds of North America back in 1827. And when I say giant, it's literally a giant book, like this big, <laughs> it's huge, it's really heavy. Um, and his pictures are huge and they're beautiful. And they really helped people learn more about birds because before John James Audubon's pictures, most pictures were of birds, the birds were dead. And so they were like, weren't moving and their eyes were closed and they kind of were like, Ugh, and kind of not as pretty. But Audubon's pictures, the birds are alive and moving and they are living in their habitat, the place they live, right? And so it helps people appreciate um, how they look and act out in their natural environment and help them understand a little bit more and also learn more. Um, so uh, he was alive back in the 1800s. And then in the 1900s, a bunch of women got together and they were trying to work together to help save birds um, back around the early 1900s, and they decided to name their group at the Audubon Society after John James Audubon, since he contributed so much to our study of birds. And so since then, since Audubon Society, which is the organization I work for, since it was created over 100 years ago, it has changed a lot. A lot of things have changed in 100 years, but our work has changed a lot. Some things are still the same. We're still working together to protect birds, but how we do that is a little bit different. So these are two pictures that I got from some of my friends um, who I work with that I think tell a really good story about what we do with Audubon. So on the left, we can see, what do you guys see? Do you guys, what do you notice on the left picture? Do you guys want to share anything? So on the left picture, oh. we have owl. A, an owl, right? A burrowing owl. These are like little owls who live on the ground in prairie dog homes. And we have them all over the Southwest in Arizona and New Mexico. Um, and, you know, some of our work is connecting people and birds to help protect the birds. So my friend Kathy sent me this picture. Um, and she works with burrowing owls because sometimes um, where those prairie dog burrows are, people are trying to build houses or other construction. And so sometimes we have to move the owls to make sure that they stay safe um, and we can find them new homes that are safer for them. So you can see in this picture, you know, she's holding um, an owl and you can see right around its leg, it's got a little band. So that way we can track it um, and make sure that they're healthy. Um, and then they release it back into the wild after, um, after they've helped move it into its new home. So that's one part that we do is we connect people with birds and we try to protect them. And then the other thing that we do is you can see on the right, this is a picture of my friend Quinn. And Quinn um, lives here in Albuquerque and she uh, 
is doing something really cool for her job. What do we think Quinn is doing? There's something hovering up there in the corner. So Quinn uses drones to and other types of science to study the Rio Grande. And so she right now is fly, fly, standing in the middle of the river and flying a drone so she can take pictures and monitor the health of the river, which means she can like keep track of how healthy it is. And she also uses it to figure out you know, where are places that are healthy and where are places that maybe we could help the habitat. Maybe we can plant some more plants or maybe um, there's some places that are pretty dry. You know, you see behind her, the river's kind of dry in that picture. Um, so she uses science as, and we all, everyone at Audubon, we use science um, to help protect their habitat because if birds don't have a safe place to live, they're going to be in trouble, right? We all need a safe place to live. So that's, what Audubon does. Basically, we try to help birds and protect the places that they live. So I was going to read us a story right now and to talk about, um, you know, we use science to protect birds, but we also work with people who just love birds out in the community, right? And so I was going to read Ruby's Birds, which is one of my favorite books. And it's about a little girl who loves birds and is learning how to bird watch and to enjoy birds who might live around her. And so she, and Ruby lives um, in New York City. So her home looks a little bit different than ours in Santa Fe. Um, but, you know, we, I think, can still enjoy it. So I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. So that way I can hold the pictures up and you guys can all see. So this is Ruby's Birds by Maya Thompson. If Miss Katie can open the book, that would be good. All right. School's out. Mom and dad are at work. My brother Malik is at so soccer practice. Grandma's at her spot in the window. Alex keeps her company. Things are too quiet around here. I know what to do. Hang on just a minute. I play the piano, the piece that my parents say is very grown up. I practice my dance routine, the one that Malik calls stomping. I talk with Alex, I think Alex is this cockatoo up here in the secret language that my grandma taught us. And I sing at the top of my lungs, the song that I made up myself. Ruby is quite excited at this point, it seems. My neighbor, Eva, from downstairs, hears everything. She calls up from her window. Hey, Ruby, wanna go to the park? Yes, 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 I sing. Ruby needs to get out of the house, I think. We pass, oh, my favorite bakery. We pass CC, my friend's apartment, and we walk right past my regular park, the one with the twisty slide and all the sprinklers. I guess Eva's going to a different park. I skip to keep up. Do you guys go to the park sometime? You have a favorite park? Yeah? Nice. Does it also have a twisty slide in it? Maybe. I follow her all the way to Central Park, where my parents sometimes take us on Sundays when we're all dressed up. I see some birds. Do you guys see any birds in these pictures? Oh, I see a big one. Do you know what that one looks like? Yeah, there are two. There's one little brown one on the gate. And what's this guy? Anybody know? Eagles. Yeah, it looks like an eagle. I think it's a peregrine falcon. They're like the fastest bird on earth. Eva is going to the woods. I've never been that way. We sing made up songs about joggers and strollers 
and fancy dogs. There's some more birds hanging around, including some, and a poodle, which is not a dog, would not a bird, but a dog. Hmm. Let's see where they're going. Suddenly, Eva stops. She looks up. She is listening. I quiet down. Me too. What's wrong, I wonder? I hear a police car, a plane, some barking. Hmm. What do you guys think that Eva hears? Birds. Oh, maybe a special bird, yeah. I tug on Eva's sleeve, but she's not paying attention to me. She holds her binoculars up to her eyes. She's frozen like a statue. And then she smiles a huge smile. Oh, yeah, I think she did see this little bird up in the tree, right? I guess everything's okay. So I start singing again. La, 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 la. Oh, Ruby, Eva said, you scared the bird away. <laughs> Who did I scare away? Eva flops down on a bench, and I sit down too. It's a bird that I've only ever seen back home in Costa Rica, she says. He's just stopping through on his way north because this is the best patch of woods for miles around. He is quite the singer, just like you. If you stay quiet, maybe we can find him again. He's called a golden winged warbler. I nod. I don't say a word and I don't sing a word either. It sounds like something from a fairy tale. We move really carefully. We're very serious and we pay attention. We watch for tiny movements in the leaves. We try and try. Ah, no luck today, says Eva. But now you know what to do. They didn't see the bird again. Let's see what happens next. That night, I sing myself to sleep as usual. What happened? A bunch of birds came in her, in her room. Yeah, were they real birds or was she dreaming of the birds? Dreaming. Yeah. She had dreams about beautiful birds and a golden winged warbler. On Sunday morning, I beg for a walk to Central Park. Malik, my brother, is not interested, but it's family time, so he has to come anyway. Do you guys sometimes do family time where you have to do something you don't want to do? Yeah. Sibling wants to do it? Yeah. <laughs> so we pass by the bodega, we pass by the theater, and I sing my song, and my family listens along as they sing. There they go. Where do you think, where do you think they're going? Central Park. They're going to Central Park. At Central Park, I lead them straight to the woods. I'm silent and serious. The name of I'm the book attention. is Ruby Loves Birds. Yeah. yeah. I hear a rustle in the leaves. Shh, I say to my family, just like Eva, I'm frozen like a statue. A tiny bird pops out of the leaves. It looks one way, and it looks another way, and it looks right at me. I can't help it. I get the same big smile, just like Eva's. Look, I yell. Ah, yes, says Grandma. I saw a warbler. I sang as it flies away. Is that beautiful golden winged warbler? The end. What do you guys think? Did you like that story? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I liked it too. So I like that Ruby saw so many different birds on her, on that whole walk. They were all through the pictures, right? Did you guys notice any birds in the background that we didn't talk about? Yeah, what else did you guys see? There were a lot of different ones, right? Right. There might be some. Yeah. Thank you for raising your hand. What's your name? What do you want to share? Um, my name is Paxton. And in the picture where they had the poodle, I saw a crow. Oh, yeah, there was a crow hiding up in the tree, right? 
I think I also saw a duck swimming in the pond in that same picture. That was a good observation, Paxton. Yeah. So this bird, book is called Ruby's Birds by Maya Thompson. And I really like this book. And I like that there were so many birds in that um, book. And so now I thought we could maybe talk about some of the birds that we have in New Mexico, because we don't have um, golden wing warblers here, actually. They only live on the East Coast, like in New, Me in, uh, New York. So what do you guys see? Anybody know what that bird is called? Roadrunner. Roadrunner. Yeah, it's a roadrunner. So roadrunners are our state bird in New Mexico, right? That, that would be pretty weird if they had a roadrunner in Central Park. That would be, that would be big news. <laughs> they don't really have roadrunners um, oh, out east. Yeah, they run really fast, right? They're really cool. I love them. They're very silly. This one in the picture looks like he's smiling, I think. Um, but here in New Mexico, we have over 540 species oh. of birds. Have you ever seen that many birds in your life? No. No, that's nope. so many. There's, yeah, there's like 750 species of birds in North America, and we have over 500. So that is a ton. New Mexico has so many birds. And we have so many because New Mexico looks really different no matter where you go, right? So there's lots of different habitats. Can you guys think of different habitats? I may have put them on the screen, but maybe some that you can think of, like where are different places that birds might live in New Mexico? Deserts. Yeah, so some live in the desert down south. What else? Forest. Near the water. Near the yeah, water. Yeah, so we have like the forest up in the mountains and like the Rio Grande and, this, and the rivers down um, lower in the valleys. And those, do those places look the same or do they look different? They look pretty different from each other, right? And so a bird that lives in the river, like the avocet, would probably not be very happy up in the forest. So we have so many different types of places to live. And that means we have so many different birds that can live in all of those places, which I think is amazing. So and another special thing of why we have so many is that a lot of birds migrate through New Mexico every winter or every spring and fall. And one of the like super special things um, that I think about New Mexico is that we have a lot of sandhill cranes. Have you guys ever seen sandhill cranes? Or do you know what they look like? No. No. No? No. Okay. So sandhill cranes are really big birds. And in New Mexico, we have one of the largest flocks. So if you go something like to Socorro or even just to Albuquerque and a little bit south, you can see Sandhill cranes, you can see thousands of them, like tens of thousands of them. There are so many of them along the Rio Grande. And we have some of the most sandhill cranes every winter um, in the entire United States. They all come right here, um, which is really special. And you can hear them and their calls sound like trumpets. Almost they're like, I can't even do it. But they, they sound like trumpets and you can hear them as you're walking in the bosque or walking by the river. So it's really cool. And they're big. Like these birds are like this tall. And I'm a grown up. And so they're pretty big, even for me. But I used a special word just now, which is migration or migrate. Do you guys know what migrate means or migration? No. What are your ideas? When birds move somewhere else um, to stay warm. Yeah, totally. So when they move, sometimes it's to stay warm. But what else could they be moving to do? Find food. Yeah, they could be moving to find food. They could be moving to find places um, to to live. Nest for their young. Yeah, and somewhere to live. So migration is that journey of relocating or moving from one habitat to another on a regular cycle. So sometimes that means in the spring and in the fall, they might fly all the way across the world or sometimes they just move up and down a mountain so maybe sometimes in the summer they go higher up when it's cooler and in the winter they come down to stay warm but you can see on this map this is a crazy map you can see that, that these are some of the pathways that birds fly they, some of them go all the way from canada 
down through the United States, down through Mexico, all the way down to Central America. And lots of different kinds of animals migrate. Can you guys think of other animals that might migrate besides birds? Any ideas? Whales. Wolves. Oh, yeah. Whales. Um, they do migrate. Um, wolves will migrate in like smaller areas. Yeah. Any other ideas? Have you guys ever seen um, videos fish. about monarch butterflies? Oh, yeah. Fish migrate like salmon go up the up the river and butterflies will migrate all the way from Mexico all the way up through North America and then um, in like thousands of them and they're so tiny. And um, worms. So what? <laughs> I don't know if worms migrate. I think they might be hard for them to get very far. They're pretty small, but <laughs> but there definitely are insects that migrate. Maybe, perhaps. Um, but yeah, so all different kinds of birds migrate, like shorebirds, as well as like little songbirds, like that warbler, seabirds, and even raptors, like hawks and vultures, they all, eagles migrate, things like ducks and geese and swans, they all migrate too. So there's so many different types of birds that migrate and move. Um, they start in the spring, usually down in Central or South America, and once it gets warm, they start to come back up through New Mexico and up into North America. And they spend the summer here where it's nice and they build nests and lay eggs and raise their babies. And then once it starts to get cold again, what do they do? Go to a warmer place. Yeah, they go back where it's warmer. So once it starts getting cold here, they head south, back down to Mexico and uh, South America. So I wanted to talk about one of my favorite migratory birds and a bird that just showed up last week, he just arrived from migration, and he's kind of crazy, kind of a crazy bird. I want to talk about hummingbirds. Have you guys seen hummingbirds around Santa Fe? Maybe some. So we get a couple of different species of hummingbirds in Santa Fe. We have broad-tailed hummingbirds, which are the ones that buzz, if you've heard those before, um, and black chin hummingbirds and they come in the spring. But around 4th of July, this guy shows up and he is very noticeable. What do you guys notice about this bird? He's very bright colored. You know, yeah, right, he's really bright. He's like shiny and orange and you can see him from a very far way. away. Anything else that you notice? It looks like, I think his neck is like red, orange, and yellow in order, like a pattern. Yeah, that's a really good observation. Um, yeah, hummingbirds, the males have these beautiful feathers on their neck that are really shiny and iridescent. Um, they're really, and they catch the light very specifically. Yeah, the other thing is that these birds, they are not very good at sharing. And so sometimes they get very aggressive and they will chase away other hummingbirds from the bird feeders. Um, and they will even chase away big birds, even though they're only this big. They're tiny little hummingbirds, and they will try to pick fights with everybody around them. So you might see them um, trying to defend a feeder. But one of the more amazing things about them is that they have the longest migration of any bird for their size. So they travel over 4,000 miles from Alaska and Canada, which is like a pretty much as far north as you can go, all the way down. And then Mexico. They end up in Mexico. Yeah, to Mexico. So in the spring, they are starting in Mexico. They go up the coast uh, through California, end up in, in Alaska, and then come back down through the Rocky Mountains, like through Colorado and New Mexico. So that's why they don't show up here until like now in July and August. And then they keep going back to Mexico in August and September. So I really love, like them. And if you guys are out and about, maybe you'll see them since they're. They're definitely around. Can Bernard ask a question? Sure. Um, I maybe the bright. I think the bright colors on their neck is to attract um mates. Oh, absolutely, definitely. Uh, to help attract females, and so they make sure they look really beautiful. And the different species have different color. Um, feathers. That's a really good observation. Yeah. And so you can see like this guy over here, you can see how some of it looks orange, but some of it looks a different color because of how the sun is um, going off of its uh, feathers. 
but yeah, so I love hummingbirds. You guys love hummingbirds? Yes. They're yes. super cool. They have amazing superpowers. Um, and I put two of my favorite things here. Do you guys know anything about hummingbirds? Mm -hmm. They love to, they love to drink flowers like nectar. Yeah, absolutely. And so what is that called if they drink nectar from flowers? Um, pollinators? Yeah, pollinators. So you can see that they use their long skinny beaks and they put them up in the flowers and they suck out the nectar. And when they're in there, sometimes pollen might fall on their beaks and their faces. And then when they go to the next flower, what happens to that pollen? Um, the pollen falls into the flower. Yeah, exactly. And then the flower uses that pollen to grow fruit and vegetables and other things. And then we get to eat that fruit and vegetables, right? So um, it's a really, we're, we are really reliant on pollinators. Yeah, what did you want to share, my friend? Um, they're also the only bird in the world that can fly backwards. Yes, they are super flyers. And we're going to do an activity about how they fly. And so you're right, Paxton, they can, they can like stand still and fly, they can fly backwards, and they have super fast wings, um, and they kind of dart all over the place. It's crazy. So we are going to do play like a quick game. We are going to see how many times can you flap your arms in 30 seconds. We just talked about how hummingbirds can flap their arms so quickly, but um, I'm going to see how you guys measure up. So I'm going to set a timer. Uh, I've got one right here. Can you guys see the big numbers yeah. on the screen? Cool. So make sure you have space that you're not going to like hit your brother or you're not going to hit other stuff in your room. I hit a bunch of stuff this morning. When I say go, you're going to count how many times you flap your wings, right? So this is like one, two, three, and we're gonna do it for 30 seconds and you're gonna see, okay? And if you need help, maybe you can ask someone to help you count. All right, you ready? Yes. On your mark, get set, flap. Oh, you guys are so fast. <laughs> oh, 10 seconds. Five. Oh, wait, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, man. Oh, I'm tired. That was Miss Katie's exercise for the week. <laughs> How did that feel to you guys? Pretty good? You tired? Pretty good? Oh, oh. Zani says they got 79. How much did you guys get? Um, I got, I got, I got 57. I got 57. 65. 65, Jackson, 60. how many did you get? 60. 60, wow. I lost track, but I think mine was around 70. <laughs> Let's see. So if we think about that, Let's see, what bird are you closest to? What number mm. bird? American you crow. American oh, crow. you were close to a crow? Um, yeah, I think I was like a robin. I'm exactly the American crow. Yeah, and that was pretty fast, even just for 30 seconds, right? But let's look over, look at that hummingbird, that broad-tailed hummingbird, how fast do they beat their wings for 30 seconds? 2,100 <laughs> wing beats. Do you think you could flap your wings 2,000 times in 30 seconds? No. <laughs> that would be impossible. Yes, I would do it. That would. Oh, you do? Oh, maybe. That would take a lot of practice. My arms are pretty tired, and that was just 30 seconds. <laughs> well, you know, I said I had about 70 in 30 seconds but hummingbirds could do like 70 wing beats per one second, which is crazy. 
That's like so fast you can't even see it, right? So I was going to show us just how fast that is. Can you guys see my screen? The YouTube yes. box? Awesome. So here's a video of a Rufus hummingbird flying around. Let's watch. And let's see, let's see if we can count. I don't think I can count. <laughs> It's blurry. That's how fast it is. Wow, that was so fast. You want to watch it slower? Yeah. Yes. It's still, so this is even slower and it's still so fast. Can you, what do you notice? What do you see? What did you notice about that video? The hummingbirds are very fast. <laughs> yeah, they're so fast. Right, they're so fast you can't even see their wings moving. And what do you? What else do you notice about this video? I see something cool, not about their wings, but about I see something cool body. about like their beak. They have a long yeah, tongue. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, there's like tongue, something right? there's... like sticking out that, and then then like then it's going back inside its beak. Yeah, absolutely. So hummingbirds use that long beak. Um, for to drink nectar out of flowers, right? Um, which is pretty crazy, I think. So I have a question. How did you guys flap your wings when you were flapping? Like, if you were doing it slowly, what did it look like? I did kind of just like this, like medium amount. I moved my arms a little bit. Did anybody do anything differently? I did it fast. You just did it like fast like this, mostly moving your hands. Cool. Did anybody do like jumping jacks? I did. Prob you did jump like jumping jacks. Um, which is, what do you think is like the easiest way to flap your wings to get them as fast as you like can? This. Probably just like the little flaps, right? Yeah. Hummingbirds. They, they definitely don't do this, right? That's too far. But th what they do is a little bit special. So if you stick out your arms, and then can you draw an eight with your hand? Like instead of just going up and down, if you draw an eight with your fingertips, that is how they are able to fly and conserve their energy. So this is, a, does this feel a little bit easier than doing the like frantic hand flapping? Maybe. Yeah. So that is the movement that hummingbirds use in order to just move, get even faster. And they, um, they're amazing. I think they're so cool to watch them fly. Have you guys seen them flying around before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In our yard. Every yeah, morning. Oh, nice. Every morning. What would you think? Go ahead. Every, mo every morning when I wake up and I am eating my breakfast, I always see a couple of hummingbirds land on my hummingbird feet. Oh, you have a hummingbird feeder. That's awesome. We're going to talk about hummingbird feeders in just a second. Nice. We actually have two hummingbird feeders. That's awesome. So actually, before we go on, do you guys have any ideas of how we can, so my job is to help protect birds, right, and conserve birds in their habitat. What are some ideas that you guys have about how we can help birds, like at your house or at your school? Clean food and water. Pac, and don't leave trash everywhere. Oh, that, yeah, don't leave our trash. And, and when they're hurt, try to put them in, like in the nicest bags. Mm, yeah, if we find a hurt bird, take them to like a vet or a rehabber. Yeah, Paxton, do you have any ideas? How we um, can help birds? Maybe you could grow um, trees so they can build nests? Yeah, absolutely. So a really good thing that we could do is that we could grow plants for them, right? Hummingbirds are pollinators, like so they flowers. need plants to survive. Like flowers, right? Like, do you guys have gardens at home or at school? Yes, we have, we're yeah. homeschooled, so we have a lot of flowers. A lot of flowers, that's wonderful. Probably yeah. like almost I have, we have over a garden. Almost a hundred. Wow, that's a lot. We don't have very many flowers. We grow like squash and corn 
in my garden, um, but which is great for people, right? To grow fruits and vegetables, but hummingbirds, they don't want fruits and vegetables. They want flowers, especially flowers that are from New Mexico, right? We want native plants, which means a plant that has grown in New Mexico for forever. And so growing those things is one of the best things we can do for hummingbirds at all birds really is to grow plants. You guys also said another thing that you guys do is that you have hummingbird feeders at home, right? Do you guys make hummingbird nectar? Yes. I've watched or maybe my your grown up makes it? I've watched yeah. my mom. Cool. Well, I thought we would make some real quick together as long as I don't spill any water on my computer. So this is my hummingbird feeder. Does it yours look kind of like this? Yes. Got little flowers and holes for them to suck out the nectar. Maybe yours looks a little bit different. Actually, and then it's ours like a jar. Like a flat, flat like round shape. Flat round. Oh, look like but it still it has looks like a UFO maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a U O. <laughs> yeah. Mine has a little bit extra. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is what mine looks like. Lots of different, there's lots of different ones out there. But the recipe to make hummingbird nectar is the same for all of them. So you need how much water? Can you guys see on the screen? What's the number? That four cups. We need four cups of water and how much sugar? One cup of white sugar. One cup of white sugar. And we just pour it in. We don't need to eat the sugar, right? It's for the hummingbird. We, we probably don't need any more of the sugar anyway. And then, where did I put my thing? There it is. We just stir it up until all the sugar dissolves. It might take a few minutes. Some people like to make hummingbird nectar um, on their stove. So they like boil the water, but sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes I like burn myself and get hurt. So some, I just like to use warm water. That's how my mom keeps stirring. Does. That's how she does it. That's how my friend Carl does it too. But then eventually all the sugar dissolves. What does dissolve mean? Do you guys know? No. No. It dissolves means it kind of like disappears in the water. It goes away. So that way we only it kind of just looks like water again. Disappear. It's ready to go. Yeah. So then You've got your hummingbird nectar. You can put it in your feeder and then you take it outside. Did we add any like red colors or anything like that or anything else? No. No, hummingbirds don't really need that stuff. They just need the sugar and water to make it look or make it taste just like nectar. It tastes pretty good. I spilled some and it's pretty delicious. So maybe you guys can help next time you're, you're grown up drinking hummingbird food. What else? Are they, do you guys have any other ideas of how we can help birds and hummingbirds? Anything? Oh, what's your idea, Paxton? Maybe try to lower the amount of air pollution. Oh, yeah, I really like that one. Make sure we keep our air clean. What else? Make them safe to get cozy. Yeah, keep them safe and cozy. Give them a safe place to live, maybe in a, like some bushes or flowers that you're growing in the yard. And, and stop so all, throwing, all animals. And stop throwing away trash. And like reuse yeah. it, like recycle it. I love that, totally. Yeah, try to make sure we have less trash on the planet, right? So all animals need like a safe place to live, like what you were saying. They need food to eat. Like what we just made. And so they need food, shelter. Is there anything else that maybe they might need? Water. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say, Paxton? Water. Yeah, absolutely. They need fresh, clean water. So we can have like a bird bath or like a little bowl outside for some water. Or maybe we live by a stream and we want to keep the stream clean. Um, and all birds like clean water, right? Not just hummingbirds. This is a junco, which is a type of little gray fluff ball that lives that comes and migrates in the winter. Yeah, what do you want to share? Um, that we have a bird feeder. I'm, I oh, mean nice. a bird bath, and we don't see a lot of hummingbirds go in it. I like. 
but we do see some birds, not a lot of birds. Some of the other bigger birds. That. Yeah, they don't go in as often, I think, because they're so little, but I have seen them, especially if you like spray the hose sometimes when they're around, sometimes they'll come and play in the water. Yeah, what do you want to share? Um, sometimes my grandparents, they have a bird bath and sometimes they have red robins that come and they sometimes see the robins you, um, splashing each other with their wings. That's so funny. Yeah, kind of like in this picture where the, the junko is getting all fluffed up and splashing the water around. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so fun. I love robins. And then another thing that we can do is we can just learn about birds and enjoy birds and um, go outside and enjoy nature, right? Because the more we know about it and the more we care about it, the more likely we are to protect birds in nature. What do you, do you guys like to go outside and do things out yes. in nature? What do you guys like to do? We have, we have a trampoline, so then we jump. Oh, you jump in nature? What do you like to do, Paxton? Um, me and my brothers, we also have a trampoline, and we like to jump as high as we can on it and pretend that we're being a bird. Oh, that's lovely. Like you're, like you're flying high up in the air? That's awesome. And when we do, do it, you guys ever... oh. when we, do it we, some, we also sometimes see some crows fly over it. Mmm, that's awesome. Do you guys ever go like hiking outside or playing in the river? We've rivers? gone hiking a couple times. Um, we've also um, went on camp camping trips and went out in the outdoors. Nice. Yeah. Do you guys want to share what you like to do outside? Go ahead. We actually, once we actually found uh, like a woodpecker. Like, like pecking like on our like our buds and nuts and cutted nuts like a cylinder of it and they get it like on a post that then the woodpecker goes and peck it with its feet then eat it. it oh burns man, it. yeah, that's a that's awesome. I love woodpeckers. They are so different than hummingbirds, right? They have total. They eat totally different things. They look totally different, and they're very funny. Also, very funny birds. That's great. Thanks for sharing that, guys. Um, so this picture is up at the Randall Davy Audubon Center. So if you guys wanted to come visit, we have binoculars. If you wanted to learn how to use binoculars, like Ruby in the book, um, or go bird watching. This is a picture of our garden with all of those beautiful flowers we talked about. Um, or you could go up on the trails and go hiking and see what you see up there because there's lots of different, lots of different things up there. All right. I had one more book for us to read um, before we finish up and then maybe we can just um, talk about like birds and things at the very end. But I was going to read this book, which is appropriately called Birds. <laughs> And I like this book. I read this one a lot with my daughter. It's, uh, I think it's a really pretty book. All right. Could you guys see the pictures pretty well last time I was holding them up? Okay, great. All right, this is Birds by Carme Lemniscate. I think that's how you say her name. And the inside cover has all these, what do you guys see? Peacock feathers. feathers. Yeah, there's peacock feathers. Lots of beautiful feathers, right? We have. Maybe that's from like a blue jay or something. I just found a feather like that yesterday up at the Audubon Center. Beautiful feathers. All right, and there's your peacock. Birds come in many different colors, shapes, and personalities. What kind of birds, shapes, and personalities do you guys see? Like a oval one, a tall one, a skinny one. Yeah, we got that tall, skinny, maybe it's a crane or a stork. We've got kind of a, owl. a round owl. Yeah, what's that one over there? That's like a that woodpecker. woodpecker we were just talking. Yeah, absolutely. 
Here's our little hummingbird up here in the corner. Hummingbird! This is one of my favorite ones. Yeah. What do you want to share, Paxton? I see a toucan. Oh, yeah. They've got crazy bills. They're beautiful birds. And I, and I this see is called a, a hoopoo. Oh, yeah. And there's like a little mallard down there. Nice. Good observation skills, guys. Some birds are really big. Like, what kind is that? Eagles. An eagle, right? A bald eagle, great. Bald eagles built the largest nest on earth. A pair in Florida built one that was like 10 feet wide. Other birds are tiny, like this little guy, right? Like a hummingbird. Hummingbirds are this hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are the smallest birds in the world. Yes, the bee hummingbird is the smallest. Some birds like to show off while others would rather watch. Some birds are okay. very noisy, while others sing a sweet and tender song. Like parrots, they're noisy, and birds like oh, to sing so noisy. Yeah, my friend has some parrots, and they yell a lot when we're on Zoom together. Some birds like to go on long journeys, while others like to stay cozy at home. What was that word we just learned when they go on the long journeys? Migration. migration. Yeah, migration, right? So the geese, they migrate a lot, while some of them, they just stick around all year round. Most like to build nests from branches, but others prefer a roof over their head. But no matter what, nearly all like to have conversations. Tweet, tweet, calls one. Cheep, cheep, replies another. For every call, there is a response. A bird song is like the loving words of a friend. That's nice. It's like a happy song that greets us every morning. Do you guys hear the birds in the morning calling outside the windows? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they wake me up. There's some noisy crows that live by my house. And our hearts sing too, because birds are like good news coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys know what these birds are? What? Blue jays. Not they, they are blue. You're right. These birds are called swallows, and they like to swoop around and catch uh, food. But you might see swallow nests um, on the side of buildings or under bridges. They've got really special nests. Do um, you know what they, they might be made out of? It's not sticks. Mud. They make their nests out of mud and spit, out of saliva. And so they make little like mud cups, and they stick them to the side of buildings. Mud or house. Cups. Yeah, exactly. Bird songs are like messages of peace. Birds are like thoughts. They come and they stay a while and then they fly away. They fly where their hearts call them. Birds are free. They make our imaginations soar. Those are, all, those are a lot of birds. It is a lot of birds. I wish I could ride a bird like that someday. That would be cool. Me too. The end. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Did you guys see any of your favorite birds in either of those books that we read? Yes. The woodpeckers at the beginning and the end. You guys saw the woodpeckers? Nice. Swallows are my favorite. Yeah. Love swallows. Cool. Well, those are all of my activities that I have planned for you guys today. Um, thanks 
for coming to story time with me. If you want to just stay on and talk about birds, I am happy to talk about birds with you guys. But if you also um, want to go do other things, that's totally fine too. But I hope you come and visit me up at the Audubon Center someday because um, it's free and it's really cool to visit. You can learn more about birds that live here in Santa Fe and maybe see some of the hummingbirds that we have if you come in the summertime. So thanks so is, much. Uh, what time are you guys open? We're open um, eight o'clock to four o'clock. Monday through Saturday. Okay. Well, that's the whole week. Yeah. What's your favorite oh, bird? I hope I see you guys soon. My bird? favorite bird? That's such a hard question. <laughs> I love um, birds. They're called magpies. And they're kind of like crows and ravens, the cousins, but they um, the ones in Santa Fe have long, beautiful tails, and they're like blue and white, but they are kind of mischievous, and they like to steal shiny things, and they also can mimic other sounds, and so sometimes they can sound like people when they're talking. So I like that they're a little bit mischievous. <laughs> Isn't there like a... Bells? What was that? Sometimes you guys go parrots, first. Parrots look some, sometimes like act out like what people are saying, talking, parrots copy. Yeah, like, parrots can also mimic. Totally, they're very smart birds. Isn't there a magpie that's black and white and maybe yeah. a little bit higher, it lives in uh, elevations just a tad bit higher than Santa Fe? Or at least that's where I've seen them. Yeah, let me see. I um, I have a picture of one that I can show you guys if you want to see it. So this is a called a black billed magpie. And we have wow. them, and there are a lot of them like around Taos. If you go up to Taos, and in um, Colorado, but we also have a couple of them that live around the Audubon Center. Um, there's like a little family that lives there, but you can see that they're beautiful. And their colors are uh, iridescent, their feathers. So sometimes they look greenish blue. Um, and they're just really beautiful, I think. And teal. Yeah, yeah kind of teal and green. That's yeah. a yeah, good observation. Have you ever seen those little birds? They come, they migrate through here in the spring, and they're not here very long, maybe a week or two, and they're smaller than a sparrow. And they're green, especially in the sunlight. You can really see they're just a beautiful green color. Have you? And I forgot the name of them, but have you seen them up there at your place? Um, I'm not sure what kind, but that sounds like it might be a type of like warbler or something. Yeah, um, and we like have a lot of warblers that migrate through. Um, that was the kind of bird that Ruby saw in Central Park, right? Was a warbler. Um, so yeah, we have a a bunch of different types of bunch of different species of warblers that come up to the Audubon Center. Some are yellow, some are green, some are black and white or gray. They're pretty cool looking. They're kind of hard to see because they're very small and they like to hide up at the top of trees. <laughs> cool. Do you guys have any more questions or anything? No. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I was really thank excited you. that you came. Have a good rest of your weekend. Okay. Bye. 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 Have bye. a nice day. Thanks. <laughs> thank you very much. Let's see. I I can't get the video to come back on, but anyway. Thank you very much. That was a beautiful program. I'm just